Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dota 2 Asia Championships. This is the final game of the day. It's been a marathon run all night. Kasten, hope you guys have enjoyed it. This is a, a lopsided matchup, it appears, at least on paper. CSW 1 and 14 now in the qualifier. On the other side, you've got Big Guy who have hardly been perfect, but they sit at a relatively comfortable 12 and 9. Well, with that said, I'm LD. I actually have a co-caster for this game. His name is Blitz. Hello, hello. Yo, yo. You sounded so sad casting that last game. I had to come and interview. Yeah, I just felt bad for CSW, man. That was just depressing. Yeah, they. it looked like they had a really cool strat. When the patch first hit, I told Kevin, I was like, there's a really cool strategy you can use for the new medallion now that you can apply it to other things. I say things because you can apply it to the uh, Lone Druid Bear now, right? Yeah. And then you can make him into an ultra tank early on. And it looked like they were just going for that, plus the bat to set up pickoffs and then just push down towers. But it never looked like it could ever get to that point for them. Yeah, I mean, part of it was, I think that... Those supports got really good levels. The Rubik hit level 6 extremely early. Ice Blast came online before the 10 minute mark for the 5 position AA. and So they had a lot of spam already. It also seemed like CSW just were not particularly interested in pressuring any of the lanes. They went for the tier 1 top and then they just kind of backed off to farm. And by the time they tried to go for those big, big group ups, it was they were already getting picked apart. Yeah, that's definitely a lineup, too, that you have to make as much as you can out of it early on. That's not a lineup that's going to kill a Morphling late game. <laughs> Who's got an Athlete and a Lincolns? Like, you really have to get active in the early game and win <laughs> He the had, like, a 15-minute Lincolns. So. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, yep, this game. <laughs> they had nothing to do with Morphling. Like, I feel like with that draft, you, you have to stay ahead of him. Because yeah, they could not stop cool. his split push. Oh. You I mean, have a Big new God draft looks now, pretty though. good, though, right? terrible all things considered like th this is probably a team that doesn't practice all that often and just kind of yolos it they also made a roster change recently getting rid of risk and bringing an extinct which um from what i understand risk was a very an integral part of just the the team dynamic and a quite a leader for them as well i thought so. he was their drafter yeah not, i believe so mistaken. and usually when you're the drafter you're going to be the guy that calls the shots around the map because if you're drafting, Radiant you have the vision of what you want to see on the map and how it's going to go. And to lose that type of player... Extinct isn't a slouch by any means, but still... I'd say a good captain right now is probably more valuable than a top-tier player by any means. That's That that certainly has appeared to be the case in, in many of these games. Well, the draft's well underway. We should talk about it. First overall pick, Naga from CSW. BG, no hesitation. Let's get some mana drain to clear the illusions. They'll go for the lion. Just a great support in general. Then they go Dusa. Uh, a tanky hero that can fight her way through the Naga onslaught. CSW reply with the Death Prophet. A hero that we really don't see very often at all in this patch. And I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about that. But uh, just to round out the, the remainder of the picks. The Venge now snapped up by BG. So they got two of the premier supports in this version. CSW going for a Nyx Assassin which we rarely have seen unless it's to counter Deuces, which in this case, uh, it probably is. And then, remaining. back to the Magnus for BG, setting up for a, a super stacked burning Medusa and CSW remaining. now into the Skywrath. But what do you think about Death Prophet, Will? Where, where is she at right now? It's really weird because the time. hero is still really good. The ultimate still does the same thing, which is it just you have ghost chicks Radiant fighting at your heels at all bad. times. But the problem with it is, now that it's 145 second cooldown at all levels, you actually can't mess up with it. Whenever you use it, it has to be to win a large scale engagement, or to push down multiple towers. Ten like You want to go for two towers, maybe a tier 2 at the very least, uh, for Five an ability like Exorcism. Remaining. And there's just a huge amount of time where you can't fight anymore. What ends up happening is, you pop Reserve the Exorcism, time. the other team knows that, they just kind of patiently wait around, for the, uh, how long does it last? 30 seconds? Yeah. And then they just jump on you because her nukes don't actually do that much damage. The silence, I guess, is a tad annoying, but she's still really easy to kill at that point. And you're putting a large amount of your farm on that hero, and I just don't know if it's worth it anymore. It just kind of feels like it's too difficult to fight around that timing. Yeah, and it also seems like teams are just... It seems like a lot of teams are picking heroes that can fight constantly as well like not every game but 
more often than not, we'll see at least two to three heroes that have low cooldown spells. They can go around the map just constantly fighting pickoffs. And I guess in good news, there is a Naga here. It could be a support Naga, though. Um, potentially, if they want to run this Nyx in the offlane, we'll, we'll see what CSW, what their idea for the Naga is. But uh, if they are running the core Naga, then I guess at least they have a backup plan for when Exorcism is down, in, in theory. But they don't really have that great setup for the, ne the Death Prophet ultimate yet. Like, you have Song, that's not very useful, and that's about it. No yeah, no Faceless Void Chrono or anything like that. Uh, I, I know that CSW, when I used to play against them back when we were in Ten Korea, used remaining. to run it as a support, so I wouldn't be too surprised if they opt to take a different carry, or even run... Remaining. I know some of the Korean teams like running Death Prophet as a one position, hmm. <clears throat> and actually I think that signifies that the Naga is almost definitely... Oh, important. Chains Naga. Yeah, it's a Chains Naga. Yeah, okay. The guy's famous for that hero. Yeah, he's... Uh, I think for a while, I don't know if it's still the case, he had the most games played in Dota 2 for any account. Oh, wait, are you serious? I think so. That's absurd. Yeah. He... he, he The guy plays a lot of Dota. Him, him Johnny... Uh, a lot of these SEA players, uh, they like they, they like to grind their pubs. They, they fiend. <laughs> I hear, I was talking to Bulba today about the reason why uh, C players and Chinese players grind games and NA players don't. Is he says it's because the C slash China scene doesn't actually have any in-house leagues. So that's the only way that you're going to get your mechanical skill up. Well, China China has in-house leagues. They have C deck. Oh, I guess that's true. Do a lot of people play that still? Well, they were. Um, I don't know if they still are, actually, to be honest. I wasn't aware if it had fallen off or not. Because most of the time when I watch the Chinese pro streams, they just play pubs nonstop. Yeah, it might not be a thing anymore. I, I know it was for a while, though. But uh, I, I haven't seen Mally okay, tweet about it, so perhaps it has, it has fallen off. That's like every in-house league, right? What ends up happening is it comes in with a lot of hype, and then players get annoyed by one or two players that are in the league that don't deserve to be there. Like, they're simply there yeah, by there's, sheer Yeah, there's always nepotism. And yeah. <laughs> And then you're you know. just like, why do I have to play with these people? Or even if there's not nepotism, you know, then there's the opposite where like people are upset because their friend can't play and yeah. you know they want to go play with their friends, so then they're not playing the league and I don't know, it's <laughs> it doesn't help that most of the people playing in these in houses are, you know, maybe on the, the younger end and a little bit hot headed and you know, people want their ELO man. It's it's like ranked. <laughs> people do not like getting stuck with teammates who they feel are dead weight. It's it's hard to break yourself out of that mentality. A lot yeah. of people just say it's simply points, but when you invest yourself into anything, you're gonna feel a little bit upset when things don't go your way. You can you can never get that time back. It's your yeah, most exactly. valuable resource, it's, William. When I play ten ranked games, LD, and I wake up and I see that I have not gained any points, I just feel like I wasted an entire day. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, I mean, you I think poured. the other day I, I, I played 15 games in a row, LD, and I actually lost but, 15 points. But do, aren't, you, aren't you always learning, Will? Dude, that's not true at all. <laughs> Life lessons, Will. You're, well, you're learning learn valuable morality lessons. I guess. I'm learning how to keep my <laughs> no, temper. I, yeah, I, I hear you, buddy. So right now they're... It looks like a 5-on-4 engagement. What are you going to do now that you're a 7k player, by the way? Are you going to like get a t-shirt made? Do you have a plaque, a trophy, you know, I was ceremony? I didn't want to say anything, but it briefly crossed my mind that I was going to get, like, one of those douchebag t-shirts made. Like, you know, when uh, your kid has entered the spelling bee my, on it. Yeah. <laughs> my kid's an honor student. Yeah, exactly. One of those bumper stickers. Like, my kid's a 7K MMR player. <laughs> what is my mom going to do with that? But it, it did briefly cross my mind because... I would have... I would have actually disowned my parents if they ever if they ever if got they, that, I that my bumper mom had that. She had the my son's a game. All right, we we I I can't be friends with Dude, your mom. You've anymore. met my mom though. She's made you dinner before. She loves you. My family loves you. It's <laughs> be nice. Well, I used I used to like her until I found this fact out. Now I I don't know, Will. Oh man. Can, can this, I still respect this your can't mom? Change, this can't change your opinion, dude. My mom's a sweetheart. Yeah, she she's also a really good cook, actually. Yeah, uh, that's that's I'm very like jealous. Point. Everybody always comes over to our house for Christmas, but oh, really? so five. Yeah. Do you have like a big gathering or? Yeah, always. Everybody always shows up. My family for the, so for the for every year we, we have a, I have a really large family on my mom's side, and every year we have like up until this year we've had she has five siblings, most of them have you know the wife or the husband plus three to four kids each, uh, and then there's you know girlfriends and. Yada yada. So it ends up being like 50, 60 people at the house every year. 
finally this year and so we all get roped into the preparations you know it's a lot of work to to feed all those people but finally this year for the first time in like 18 years her brother hosted it and the best part is He's he's way smarter than my mom because he catered the dinner. So yeah, no, they use paper <laughs> plates. There's no cleanup. There's no cooking. It wasn't quite as good, but you know, hey man, I'll eat slightly worse food if it's that much less stressful. <laughs> I eat, I really like catered food. On a side note, though, the game is starting up again, and I'm trying to be more professional. That was the that was the main knock on me is that no I can't build into other things too much. No poop jokes. No poop jokes today, but um, you, you suck. It looks like they're gonna run in five don't, on five. Don't change on me, Will. I'm, dude. I'm trying to be more professional, LD, and you're you're dragging me back down. Dude. Okay. You wanna you wanna have a professional cast? We can have a professional cast. <laughs> it's our it's the last game of the day. I've gotta practice, man. I have to practice casting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BG versus CSW, <laughs> round two, fight. <laughs> BG on the dire side. We start with ROTK, Ice Ice, Lanham, going mid, Shawi, and to the safe lane, March is burning for CSW 2D. Ice Ice? Not that to be confused with Ice Ice Ice. Why would you na make your name one less ice? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to be professional here, Will. I'm okay, just, can you just I, keep right. it together for that last? You haven't even had to talk yet, and you're already being unprofessional. That's like, you're already saying that you're two-thirds of somebody. Like, that, that can't. <laughs> um, okay, 2D on your clockwork. We've got Musica as the Death Prophet. Heading to the safe lane is Godot on the Nyx Assassin. Support, Extinct on the Skyrath, and that does leave Mr. Chains on the Naga. Yeah, uh, she, she... I don't know if she has the name because she's like an Ice 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 fan or if it just happens to be a coincidence. There's no way that's a coincidence, right? You know, I just decided that you're going to make yourself Ice Ice. Not, not I could understand ice. if it was Ice, but when it's like more than yeah, one... Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's not a natural thing, you know. I don't actually know where she got her name from, though. That's a good question, now. now I'm curious. ROTK doing pretty good in this bottom lane, though. He's got two CS and he's even going for Deny and... I don't know. I, I thought the last game that BG had a more late game oriented lineup without a lot of initiators, but I feel like they just kind of brutalize them with individual skill. Isn't that what it felt like? Yeah, pretty much. I also just felt like CSW didn't have uh, quite the... S I don't know. I feel like they needed a bit of a sense of urgency that game. Just because they had no answers to the Morphling. And and they were giving him free farm, right? Like yeah. They were not doing anything to challenge him. It would just take too much for them in that uh, lineup to kill the Morphling. Yeah. Or it's the type of hero that you have to commit a lot to kill. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, the idea of their draft was pretty clearly, like, we're not going to try to kill him, we're just going to make him come to fights by pushing, but... Or, or punish him if he's not coming to fights by taking towers, but that did end up happening. At least this lineup, though, CSW, they have a lot of synergy between their draft. They've got Clockwork plus Skyrath, which is kind of like the more gank-heavy version of the Chronosphere mm -hmm. combo. I know Alliance, I think it was like pre-TI4, really liked this uh, synergy. They used to run Bulldog a lot as Clockwork, and they'd have Ake or something play the Skyrath. And as soon as the Sky and the Clock are both six, they just roam around getting kills. But I'm not too sure who they're going to be able to kill in this matchup. I feel like SF's going to go for a BKB or even a mech relatively soon. The Medusa is a Dusa. That hero She's going to be tanky. To kill. Yeah. Especially with the amount of farm that Burning's getting right now. He's got 14 right now, compared they, to the 11 of Chains. They also have Swap, which is really good against that combo, so... I mean, yeah, maybe the Avenge dies, but still well worth it to, to save a core. Yeah, and the problem right now for CSW, though, is that they've hard committed to this Naga, and they probably felt... When you feel individually... Um, what's the word here that I'm looking for? Like, you're outskilled, you're mm -hmm. trying to go for the best late-game heroes that you can, and just force it to there, and Naga is that hero. But with Medusa's ultimate being able to clear the Stone Gaze instantly kills Illusions, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, you've got the Lion. Uh, yeah, and you've just got like the the AOE. Well, not AOE, but you have the split shot to just work all the Illusions down together. Yeah, there's just so much that works against it right now. Oh, mid lane, Musica trapped out by Lanham. The early rotation comes in, but huh, just kidding. Hello, Lanham. <laughs> Impale. Follow-up comes out from Extinct, and the first blood, this time will go to CSW. 
They even want to go on Chow Aid here, who stuck around for a while. He begins to bottle up. They have another Impale in five. I feel like they could have chased that, actually, but they're going to let him go. I think they were just afraid. If they got double raised up the hill, the Skyrath would have definitely died. That's Kodot true. was quite low, too. Although he did have Spike Carapace. That might have been an okay decision. I feel like if Xiao Aid just goes straight back to his tower there, he shouldn't be worried at all. But it yeah. looks like he just went up the uphill cliff to maybe go for an outplay. Yeah, they're, they're not... I mean, maybe maybe they're getting his head. So, top lane, Ice oh, Ice top. gets pulled into the cogs, and Tootie gonna find a nice solo kill. CSW, they've been they've been taking some shots to the the gut from the chat here after that first game, but they strike back in this game number two, taking two kills in a first blood already. Well, one wrong there is that Ice Ice allowed Tootie to go for the side pull to try to deny some XP because the lion left the lane. And she was the only person solo zoning out there, but she just got caught a little bit too far out. Especially with all the creeps that 2D had, that was a free kill. They're already gonna move. Lanham and Ice Ice grouping up together, they have the boots. ROTK with the one point in skewer. Naga not level 6 yet, they're gonna initiate here with a Hex. But Godot's there, oh he misses the Impale completely! Do they turn this one? They won't work on Godot, but he actually has the Carapace, so he'll be fine. Skewer wasted. Kind of a fail gank in general, and a fail reaction as well, but everybody says, you know what, let's just pretend that never happened and, and go back to the game. Yeah, it looks like BG are just getting a little bit too over-eager with trying to make stuff happen on the map. Oh! Music is so close! It's crazy how many individual plays we're seeing right now from CSW. Shall we almost dying mid, just barely, like, Matrix-style dodging that, that last Crip Swarm from Musica. Oh, and at top, 2D's being zoned out pretty heavily. He's only got 3 CS to spike the kill, whereas the Magnus already has up to 13. And just that uh, type of minimal advantage that he's getting early on is going to mean a lot. Once he gets a Blink Dagger, that's all that hero really needs, which is why I think they opted to put him in the off lane instead of typically where you see him in the mid lane. 2D is getting his levels, though, as, as you mentioned. He's level 5 already. RTK still doing okay, for especially for an off lane mag. He hits 4. So far, pretty... I mean, you look at these drafts, the cores are... A lot of these carries are just very AFK farm type heroes. Shadow Fiend, Death Prophet, Medusa. Not particularly active do shits. They got an impale mid on RTK, though. He's going to go down to the rotation from Godot. Nice play as they look for the Shao oh, kill. Oh go my down god, he takes so much damage from that nuke with the silence from the Skyrath. One more will end him. He ends up popping. CSW, make it 4-0. to zero. Somebody lit a fire under their ass, finally. Yeah, and it just looks like they're... I think this mainly comes down to their supports rotations being a bit better. What's going on right now is that BG is actually just rotating with Lan M, who's trying to go around the map making individual plays, but how are you going to kill a Naga with just a Lion? And I guess the Venge rotated over, but a level 3 Venge with only level 1 stun doesn't add too much either. And when he went for the mid gank too, if you notice, CSW always has both their supports together. They realize the strength of both the Nyx and the Skyrath going together instead of just individually one of them leaving the lane. The downside of that, of course, is that you leave the Magnus to get a lot of bubbles in 3 farm. Yeah, obviously it works out well in this case because Mag was mid and ends up going down as well. But oh, top lane again, Ice Ice in trouble, burning. He's going to try and support this, but they get the kill. Now Tootie going back in for more. Battery Salt, unfortunately, has ended, though. And now he's in a bit of trouble. Rain around the Rosie. He'll try to cut, suck him in with the cogs. Can they get off the silence on Lanham as he rotates through? Gets the Impale and Extinct. Now pushed around a little bit. Will end up going down. And they chase on to Burning. Looking for an additional kill. He will Stone Gaze, though. And turns to fight Extinct. He brings him low. No mana for a Mystic Snake. A Crypt Swarm. Way short as Burning retreats out. But they are backstabbing, not done just yet. Godot going deep. He doesn't have mana for impale. Now he does. Bernie with we'll the jukes. The, the attempt to jukes. Don't whiff this it. Is your Don't biggest... whiff it. Don't whiff it, Godot. You got oh, this. He's you so got this. Oh, he's so afraid. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Now remember, he's doing that on like 250, 300 ping, so. Yeah, he doesn't want to. He definitely doesn't want to miss that one, especially with the one at bottom where he probably got the kill. And meanwhile, Tootie goes in with the hookshot, gets a kill on Shao 8. They are. Where was this CSW the entire tournament? They are just wrecking BG right now. <laughs> 3,000 gold lead, 3,000 experience. They are off to a hot start here. Radiant's it, bottom I mean, it just, looks like, attack. it just looks like CSW's rotations from their supports are working out a lot better. It looks like every time BG rotates a support over, it's either 
in response to one of their heroes getting killed, or it's just with a single support hero. I feel like Ice Ice and Lana need a little bit more synergy right now, because this seems to be affecting them quite a lot. Whereas if you see Extinct and the Nyx Assassin, they're just getting so much done on the map together. Individually, they both have level 5 right now. Avenge is only level 4, and the line is only level 3. And when you see one hero rotate only for a gank, you should have a bit more levels. But because CSW has had, what, six successful ganks on those two heroes alone, you're starting to see that pay off. Hmm. Um. Do you know how to fix the Dota TV bug? Like, apparently, if you go into showcase mode, it somehow messes things up. I have no idea, dude. Okay. If anyone knows how to fix that, just let me know. I, I, I have no idea what causes it or, or how to remove it, but I mean, as you can see on the stream, I'm, I'm not currently in that mode. They are going to move around. Extinct and Godot smoked up and they've got this Observe War behind the tower. So they know there's nothing backing up Ice Ice now. They get the initial concussive shot off, follow up Impale, critical kill. Very simple and just surgical movements from CSW. 9-1 to one the score. Yeah, now the scary thing is that Extinct at 10 minutes is level 6. So what he's going to do now is go around with 2D and look for the hook shot plus ultimate combo. And EG does have a ton of ward set up, and does CSW even have a smoke left? No, it's cooled down for 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So after they get, they get this kill, maybe they start centering everything, is what I would probably do. And yeah, Godot already has a sentry on him. And if they can get rid of the safe lane ward, or wherever the ward is protecting, uh, burning, they can pretty much just abuse him right now. Yeah, and the BG draft of there's not... They don't real... Running Shadow Fiend and Medusa, you... Uh-oh. Tootie now gets scouted out. Oh, they were waiting for him. They must have seen him pick up this Invis rune. Yes, they did. I think it was top. I'm not sure. Either way. Yeah, they it's, have rune wards. Yeah. So they definitely saw that one. Um, but yeah, like, running a Shadow Fiend and Medusa, it's only really the Magnus and the supports that can go make plays. And, well, their supports are level 4 and 5 and pretty underfarmed and... The Magnus, RTK is his arcane boots, but he's not exactly, you know, Blink Dagger, four staff level just yet. Yeah, you have to play with BG's lineup. You have to play Counter Initiate and try to predict where CSW is going to go for. It's harder for them to set up on kills, although they are going to look for this kill on Godot at top, and it looks Dyer's like he isn't too aware of it. They are smoked up, but this is still three heroes and a smoke king. And if he just pops the spike carapace, I think he's okay here. And it looks like they're going to turn it around on him. Kapow! Now a hook shot. Looking for more. Onto burning they go. He gets up the stone gaze, but that battery assault will keep on going through it as Clockwork finishes off one. Maybe even looking to dive ice. Ice here, and eh, not gonna happen. So it looks like Shout will go for the mech build. I, I think given what they're up against, that they need this more like they need some one of these two, either the Deuce or the Shadow Fiend to be able to fight. And mech uh, definitely fits that build. Yeah, I figured he'd get it early on, just because looking at the lineups, it's going to be brutal for him for quite a long time. If he gets a mech, though, he should be able to survive the combo, but I feel like getting a BKB off the bat doesn't really do too much for your team. It only helps yourself individually, and what does a BKB really do against that? Apparently, reconnecting will fix it. I just don't want to miss this kill for those on the stream. So chains will go down. All right, now I'll, I'll try reconnecting, guys, see if that fixes the, the Dota TV camera. It's a little okay. fussy. I'll try to let people know what's going on. There's Shaoit's farming some neutrals. CSW is going for a kill with the Clockwork uh, Skyrath combo, like I said. It looks like they were looking for Ice Ice, but that's not exactly the target that you want to go for. Mm -hmm. And Godot is actually invis in the enemy jungle. Like, CSW is playing this matchup so aggressively right now. They're completely clearing out the jungle. And like you said, BG's lineup, it's really farm intensive. They've got a Scott. Or they've got a Shadow Fiend, a Medusa, and a Magnus. All three of those heroes definitely need a lot of farm to accomplish anything on the map. The problem is when your jungle is being evaded this early on, it kind of just limits the amount of space that you're going to have. Uh-oh. Hello, Vengeful Spirit. Oh, go down. He misses the, the, burrow, the, the Impale, unfortunately. And he'll still try to chase here with the bottom. And they get off the concussive shot. That is a long way to dive. They'll go for it with a hook shot. Ice Ice does have a swap if he wants to run out. Oh, Finger coming through. They'll get the kill. Now go out on the run. And meanwhile, bottom lane, RTK just going to push. So they end up getting the kill on the clockwork, and your vengeful spirit actually survives. Yeah, that was quite surprising. I think if you just shot the, uh, 
hook immediately, he would have been able to get her, but just maybe a little bit hesitant. I mean, the ping has Radiant's to play the biggest difference in things like that. Attack. You can see when CSW, they pick themselves a lot of skill shots. Yeah. And you can kind of see the hesitation in their eyes. They're, they're thinking to themselves, okay, we just have to line this up just perfectly. And the fact that they had to chase her into a tower just to set up for that kill is way too dangerous. Yeah, it does end up costing them quite a bit there. Is Lanham on, on the back of that? Now up to 1,200 gold, so working his way towards what I imagine will be the Blink Dagger coming out soon. and Burning, going for the Helm of the Dominator here. So he has been stacking the Ancients a little bit. Looks like his creep is going to go back to the base and heal right now after that latest stack attempt. And picks up a Gloves of Haste. So I guess a, a Maelstrom incoming. Is that the, the build here? Um, yeah, I think that that could definitely work. Maybe this it's is a Ultra. really glass cannon build. Yeah, maybe it's the super catch up Midas. The armlet Dusa. <laughs> the armlet Dusa, yeah, that would give her armor and some PKP. Oh, and they're gonna hit. Yeah, this is a dead Dusa. Well, that is the squishiest Dusa I think I've seen in a while. <laughs> Bernie just went splat. I mean, he probably just didn't expect that they dive that far in. That was just a really well executed gank by CSW. And like I said, they've popped the ghost now. They have to go for this tower. Oh, ROTK, please! Oh, did he just whiff his RP? He was invis, he shockwaved her, and then hesitated for a half second, then RP'd the ground. Yeah, they definitely need that spell to defend now, too. I think he, if Change just tells his team, RP is used, they're gonna get even more aggressive on the map. I think he was like, I think he was like, okay, I'm gonna skewer, and then RP, and then he's like, oh no, I should just RP. And then he ended up waiting too long and didn't get anything done. Yeah, that was just a little bit unfortunate. And Godot is actually the target right now. Gets caught out a little one. bit. Ice Ice dropping low will fall. And now Lanham on the run. RTK is going to go for the skewer through the tree line. That one he connects on. Just punches oh. him in the chest. Yeah, just to show that he can do it when he feels like it. Lanham with the quick turn. He's going to get off an, an impale. And Musico just looks to run him down. With the, the Yules here, he's very fast. Actually, guess is wrong, though. And Lanham will make it out to safety, preserving that precious, precious gold as a rocket connects in the found. A bit too late to, to actually get the kill. Shall we? We'll manage to take the tier one during this time. So BG are keeping themselves in it, but Naga Relic coming pretty soon. Yeah, that. If Lion had a TP there, I think um, Music had actually made the right choice with nuking in that direction. But I don't think he clicked on the line to see that he didn't have a TP. So, I mean, if Lion doesn't have a TP, the only direction he's going to run is to buy one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's going to continue to go to the, the secret shop. But the problem right now for BG is that their lineup is so dependent on farm. Like, all of these heroes can't do anything without farm. The mag does have his blink dagger, so you've got one hero that's pretty much outfitted. But burning is definitely not in fighting shape, as we saw from that kill in mid. This is like the, the weakest Medusa film. <laughs> I mean, once you get your, you know, obviously it helps accelerate your farm a lot, but... At this stage of the game, burning is, especially against the Nyx, is just so squishy. What? Curious to see if Godot actually levels up the mana burn. Normally we see Nyx's max it versus Medusa, but uh, he has taken that second point in Carapace. I think this is a Carapace game, just because there's no BKB builders on BG, uh, unless it's the SF. Yeah. So early game, it's going to do a whole lot. And also the Medusa's just, she's dying anyway, so I guess they don't really need the max mana burn. Yeah, yet. it's not... <laughs> I think he's not getting stats items, you know. It. Yeah, I mean, 800 HP, only 546 mana. It's not a lot of effective health. Not too much armor as well. I, I mean, I, I know, I know some player. For some players, like the argument is, if you're up against a mana burn, that you're better off just avoiding the normal Medusa items. So maybe you go like Satanic, Butterfly, like avoid the items that give you a bunch of intel. But here fuck comes the fight bottom as Tootie's gonna hook shot in onto Ice Ice, catching her out, but she's able to survive through the Shao 8. Also surviving, now the Stone Gaze gets popped, burning, ushering them backwards, they're gonna lose one. Maybe Music ends up going down here, they have the Blink RP. If RT can get it off, he will, and now he'll skewer Musica back in. Raise one, catches him. Three fall. They do preserve the Naga, and Chains does nearly have a Radiance, but that is a costly, costly assault on that bottom tier one. Yeah, and that's the only way that BG is actually going to start fights, if CSW comes into them. 
uh, because they just don't have the best initiation unless ROTK finds some sort of ridiculous RP. But with the way they were able to initiate right there, it's really good. And by the, I'm reading that Ice Ice is a dude, and it's just one of the people that they play with a lot, that they stack with a lot. I'm um, sorry, what about Ice Ice? I said, I think it's a guy, is what people are saying. I was under the impression it's a uh, PC Cold, who's a female caster. I, I, per I hear that person is casting right now. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. I, that someone someone tweeted at me that that's who it was, so I, I assumed they knew better than me. But apparently you can't trust anyone these days. Yeah, apparently she's casting a game right now. So there's no way it can be her. Okay. <laughs> My bad. It's okay. I mean, I was, I was calling it a shade the entire time. Whatever, man. We're casters. The key thing here is we go on the offensive. We did nothing wrong here, LD. Well, no, it's going on the offensive means not not defending that we did nothing wrong, but flaming the chat. <laughs> you guys are all idiots. I don't even know why you're watching the stream. That is the wrong information. <laughs> <laughs> See, See how? What, where's Burning going to go next with his item progression? He does pick up an ultimate orb, so I guess it's a casual gloves of haste what? for now. Why would you? Okay. Why? I, I don't know why you would do that, but it's not. It's not like the, the gloves of haste gives you some sort of like major added bonus just to have. Maybe I. It's, I'm was, really it's not sure. Just a text switch. He just thought to himself. Um, okay, this this item right now, the gloves of haste. Maybe I can turn this into a Midas or a Maelstrom, and then later on I can turn that gloves of haste into something else. Yeah, because he's chopping it off now. So there's no way that was like a. Maybe he was just, maybe he was just cold, you know. Yeah, yeah. Needs a little, a little something, something to keep him warm at night. Oh. So. Well, Bernie is gonna go for his ancient stack now. The the wild wing ripper chilling here and helping him out. And actually, the lead farmer is Shao Eight right now. He sits at one fifty three CS, just behind the enemy Naga, well ahead of his own Medusa. And He's he's done a good job in the solo mid roll. Shall we normally know? Uh oh, did I jinx him? I jinxed him. He gets caught by the <laughs> blink impale, and he BKB is swapped out. Oh, I don't know if they needed to swap him. He could have gone in with the requiem, perhaps. I don't think they get the kill there, but they play it safe with the defensive swap, and now I say on the chase. Lanham will get the blink imp impale off. They follow it up with the magic missile, and Godot will pay. In the meantime, our TK is searching. He wants the music a kill. He's looking for the Death Prophet and not going to bother chasing. Instead, goes for Extinct and land him there to secure it once again. BG, it's, uh, CSW just starting to fall apart after the slanting stage. But they still have Chains, who's absolutely ridiculously fair right now. He's got a Radiant. I think that's his Boots of Travel coming now on the Courier as well. And this is kind of just what you expect out of CSW. They're going to try to create as much space as they can for Chains to get uncontested farm right now. But the problem is that they did have quite a bit of a lead, but they're trying to just press it a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, they'll push in. They'll look for the tier 2 bottom. Chains, BOT's now arriving. He does have Song, with the Sol Rain all have mana for for that if he wants to, but... They'll continue just starving the enemy jungle out a bit. But Burning is looking to take this tower down, and... This is a big tower to claim at this stage of the game. The tier 2 bottom, the, the gateway to the Radiant Jungle. Uh-oh, extinct. He tried to get cute with the tower tonight. He got it, but it'll cost him his life, and just more and more worth? gold piling into Shaoid's pockets. Is that worth? I I don't think so. You don't think it's a Skyrath for... How much gold did he just deny there? Like, half like the 500, 600? Yeah, I mean... But then you give him, like, what, 200, 300 back? Uh, I think it's... And you give them experience, and... It's a level 8 Skyrath, though. Yeah, that's true. He it's, is, he is low like enough level worth. that maybe it's worth. Yeah, it was like side worth. It, you know what? I'm going to definitely say that was the worth department. But now you're you're giving Lanham confidence, though. There's intangibles here, Well, <laughs> The confidence. He knows he can get away with blinking aggressively <laughs> forward. Like now I know I can dominate <laughs> this puny Skyrath mage. For I am the mighty lion. He's feeling himself. <laughs> Jesus. That's an image I don't need. No, not like that. Oh, <laughs> LD. I'm, we're trying to be professional, Will. It's, I mean, like, like seriously, a, can no, you just keep a, it clean? It's a rap term. PG. Like, LD, grow up. Or grow younger, I guess, in this case. <laughs> Act your age, LD. <laughs> Speak English, motherfucker. <laughs> that's what, you know, that's what, uh, that's what Slicks would always tell us. Really? Whenever we did anything, he'd say, Act your age, Will. 
<laughs> it was like the funniest thing. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's possible for you. What? To act your age. Act my age, yeah. I, I'm 24 and I just realized that. I keep thinking I'm like 19 or something. It's yeah. really bad. <laughs> At heart. You're gonna be like 80 years old, like, still acting like you're 19. Like a clown, yeah. <laughs> Being a clown. But you're our clown, so we forgive you. Aww. Yasha now up on chains. He's working towards the Manta style. And nothing too exciting there. Your Shadow Fiend also gonna build towards one. I, I do worry a bit for CSW, though. Their night like, game's definitely strong with the Naga, but... That's about it. BG are running this really beefy dual core with Empower... As well as the Venge backup, they have the Lion to counter the Illusions. I mean, for now it's going all right, but I I feel like if they can't get something big done in the next 10-15 minutes, that this is going to be tough to take late. Yeah, I feel like CSW just messed up two engagements that they absolutely should not have, and allowed BG to climb back into the game. I think the score was nine to one at one point. When you have that sort of lead, maybe they just got a little bit too over eager with trying to create space for the Naga, and they started feeding heroes left and right, and feeding kills early on means a lot less than feeding kills later on, just because of the sheer amount of levels that you're giving up, and any sort of sprees that you're giving up as well, that's really costly, and what, what? Ring already has a Scotty, and he's got 1500 gold on top of that. And now he's got his close of haste back, dude. I just don't even understand where he got this I, from. I, he, maybe he's done some testing, and this extra gloves of haste just helps it's like a, an efficient item to, you know, he has an extra inventory slot, right? So yeah. he, if he wants to build Maelstrom eventually, then, I don't know, maybe, maybe it is a value pickup for your farm speed. That was, I mean, now he's really tanky. We were talking about how he wasn't tanky before, but now he's yeah. got a Scotty and a helmet. And this is where you will need to start leveling up the Mono Burn. I think Godot realizes, uh-oh, this Naga's getting big, is going for a lot of stats. I did see a Vost up against a... I, was, I think I was mentioning this a bit earlier, but he, he basically went like a no plus int build. So he kind of neglected the mana shield, but it also means the mana burn doesn't screw you as much. Oh, that was a really nice play by Ice Ice. Swapping the line to get in position for the stun so we can get the spike therapist off. And all of a sudden, Burning's got a lot of farm. You remember when we were debating what a skill build was? He at that point was level 8. And that must have been like 9 minutes ago? Yeah, He's level still nine the minutes. level 2 Mystic Snake. It's really brutal for the Knicks right now. And he's such an important hero, really, to, to deal with the Naga. A lot of these heroes, actually. Like Lion, someone you love to combo break and just quickly deal with in a fight, but it's just not working out for him. Manta's now going to arrive for the Shadow Fiend, and BG just continue to claw back into this game. In fact, now they lead by 5,000 gold and 14,000 experience. Well, I don't even want to look at these graphs. They're depressing. <laughs> and even though CSW does have a kill lead, you always have to consider, like I said earlier, where the kills came from. The majority of CSW's kills came in the laning phase and early on ganks, and most of BG's kills would come later on. So the XP difference isn't a surprise whatsoever. Well, um, chat is not happy with me. Why? Because they're five minutes in the past when I flamed them. <laughs> <laughs> they're giving you the, the finger thing, right? The yeah. ALD thing. Dyer's yeah. top tower is under attack. <laughs> now they're giving me hearts while, while giving me the middle finger. It's, it's like the love hate thing. It's like what Grace. It's like Reddit, off. basically. Yeah, yeah, it's like Reddit. <laughs> I have a lot of nice posts about me on Reddit, and you should just retire from Reddit now. That way you end on a high note. Exactly, right? exactly. I'm gonna remember Radiance myself as this great guy. Going. Everybody thinks I am top tower until is you know I, I lose my passion and. You really did a good job of bamboozling them, I have to say. Yeah, thank Very you. impressive. That, that is my... That's what they call me. The Will bamboozler. The bamboozler <laughs> There's a Maelstrom now picked up, though, by Burning. He's, he just keeps doing Ancient Stacks, too. Yeah, it was it was Maelstrom. I mean, I what mean, else could I, that gloves I, I, I feel part of that's on CSW. Like, you, you ha you, there has to be a certain amount of effort invested in shutting this down, but... A lot of it just goes back to losing those fights where now they don't have too much confidence about getting out on the map and, you know, the Ven just now parked behind Burning has been there. You have a Nyx, in theory, one of the better heroes to contest these Ancients, but... And the Clockwork, but uh, I guess at this point Burning's just too tanky to even go on anymore. Same with Xiaoyi. They don't really have any BKB breakers on CSW. That's like the really big weakness of their lineup. They've got a Clockwork, a Skyrath, and a Nyx who are essentially useless now against... Shall we? All they can do is net one of those tanks and then watch them just stand there and not give a crap. 
they're going for it though. They have to. They realize their lineup is a lot weaker later, and as the game goes on, you're not catching up to burning and farm. A lot of teams have learned that lesson. Yeah, it's a it's it's a painful lesson to learn. That's for sure. He walks down in the river. This will be an interesting engagement. They get the quick RP on Godot only, though. Did not manage to catch out 2D. Oh, it doesn't really matter, though. Burning going to finish him off. Godot will be next. The exorcism is going. Maybe enough to assassinate Ice Ice. Will be, but BG just kind of ignore Ice Ice and go straight into the pit. While, meanwhile, your Naga Siren Illusions are swarming the tier 2 mid, and, and now they're going to send one bottom to cut the wave, it looks like. Yeah, something I do want to mention is a point you brought up earlier about uh, they should have been able to stop the Ancients, but they didn't. That's completely true. If you're a team and you're getting, you have this sort of lead and then your momentum just drops off, you stop thinking about the little things, and you only look at the overall big picture of the game. You only think, oh, we're losing these fights, what's going on, and stuff like that, instead of looking at how that lead up is. And it looks like BG is just a lot more composed right now than CSW. I mean, they've had guys play every TI, They've got one guy that just won a TI. Yeah, I mean, you just you just look at the names on the roster. It's <laughs> if they're gonna get nervous, it's probably not in an online qualifier match. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Especially against a team that's one and twelve. This isn't exactly the team that you're thinking to yourself. Wow, what if we lose this game? I mean, you lose some face, but these guys have pretty much won it all already. Yeah, well, not Burning Man. He hasn't won his championship yet. Is there is there flag a picture of ROTK screaming? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I just realized that. Is that? I think that's RTK. Yeah, that has to be. Who else would they? Who would else? Who else would be the best guy? Maybe it's burning. It's definitely not burning. Yeah, it's definitely not burning. It's the hairstyles, man. Yeah, I'm jealous. He's got. He's got a. Uh, he's got some interesting looks. That Asian hair. I wish yep. I could do cool Dyer's stuff like that. Yeah, I want that kawaii hair. I would just look awful. <laughs> Have you tried it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like the Korean hairstylist, so. Yeah, well, one time when I was, uh, I was, my friend went to Notre Dame and I went to Purdue. They've got a pretty big rivalry. So I decided we'd make a bet, which was a terrible idea because Notre Dame was better than us. So I frosted my tips with my hair. Oh, really? It looked awful. Ugh. It just looked terrible. That ain't for me. Yeah, I try to look cute for you. No, I'm saying that look oh, is not okay. good. <laughs> That would not look good on me, is what I mean. It doesn't look good on a lot of people, LD. <laughs> oh boy. So Here comes the siege. Race, but he hasn't really been cutting creeps, and how does he against CSW's lineup yet? Yeah, I'm just mana drains the one walking by. Yeah, I... Lion is just such an obvious... Uh, the hero is already really good in this patch. I, I feel like it, it actually has gimped a lot of the illusion carries pretty heavily, just how strong Lion is in general right now. It's just such a greedy support, but if he can run it well, you get quite far. Is it that greedy anymore, though? Like, with the base damage increase, he's actually pretty good at zoning. You can gank pretty well with the le even just the level 1 hex and impale, because level 1 hex is the 2.5 seconds now. Yeah, I guess you're right. Before he, it was I mean, I, I agree he's not like a Skywrath, but it seems like his lane presence is actually a lot better than it used to be. Unless you're like, try on try, then he still feels pretty weak there, but... Yeah, in a try-on-try try situation, he doesn't really provide much for you. But he still needs a lot of levels to accomplish a lot on the map. That's true. When we saw him solo gank around the map, he was just level 2, and it doesn't really do a lot of damage. Yeah. A level 1 earth spike is nothing. It's 80 damage. After the reduction, it's closer to 60. It's like almost not even worth throwing, <laughs> just aside from the stun. Yeah, and I just realized that the entire CSW lineup is just disconnected. It wasn't just one guy. Clearly a rage quit. I mean, time to make a Reddit thread, boys. What do you what do you really do at this point for if you're CSW? Your Nyx is level nine. He we talked about that like eight minutes ago. Your Skyrath's level nine. They hit level six at ten minutes, both of them, which is extremely quick. And in the twenty minutes preceding that, they've only gotten three levels. It's pretty ridiculous. Just a very composed response from BG. They had that bad start. A lot of Less veteran teams could have just folded. I think they were down nine to one at one point, but now fourteen to fourteen, the score. They lead comfortably. They're pushing down mid. The Knicks is trying to split push, but the Naga's actually bottled up in the base, and there's really nowhere to bot that's going to threaten BG's rack. So they pretty much have to fight this. And I, honestly, will like 
I d these illusions are not going to do anything. You've got Stone Gaze, the Hex, the Mana Drain, mass, just sp not splash damage, but effectively uh, splash damage with the Split Shot, where the illusions are just all going to die. So I, I don't know what you do now if you're CSW. It feels like checkmate, to be honest. Yeah, imagine if they had a fighting carry instead of the Naga. Maybe this is CSW just trusting in the Chains Naga, but there's so many counters by uh, by BG. I think they, even without the Mana Drain, when they walked down the lane and they saw a Naga Illusion, they three-shotted it. And so when that happens, that has to be a little bit demoralizing. Typically, you want to be able to see the Naga clear creep waves by yourself or stop pushes, but that doesn't really seem to be the case with BG here. And if you notice, he's kept his Wild Wing Ripper. That gives you bonus armor for the push. And you can throw that annoying, uh, what's that thing called again? The Tornado, I guess. Yeah. The Tempest mm. ability out. Is that what they, is it called a Tempest? Yeah. Well, it's called a Tornado, but the ability is called a Tempest, which makes no sense. Hmm. Oh, like you clicked on the Tornado and it says Tempest? So I click on the Tornado and, uh, if you hover over the name on it on the left, it says Tornado, but then the ability is called Tempest. Tornado. Ah, oh, I see. That's so weird. Now my OCD is is tingling. Right? Because it's the why why would the ability have an ability? Like it I'm I'm very confused now. Yeah, this is bothering me right now too. Don't worry. I mean, the thing is you have to sol it has to be selectable so you can control it, but why does it have an ability icon? That's just weird. The hero already has the ability icon. And they're yeah. actually are they the same description, even? No, they're not. It's the, I guess that's the big difference. But you could have still what the hell? Tornado. This is... Why? <laughs> All this information should be on the Wild Wing. Uh, uh, Valve, please. This is, uh, this is actually really bad. This is triggering you right now. This is, the, this is uh, literally unplayable. Literally unplayable. I mean, what do we... Re I'm sorry for people for getting off topic, but what do we even talk about? Like, four heroes are... <laughs> Four heroes are DC'd. We pretty much talked about. We've done our job, right? Did, did you end up going to Wingstop? Did you get some yeah, good I, food? Grace got me some on the way back. Oh, uh, I good. think she's at your house right now, right? She's dropping Ben off at the airport for Kia. Is she? Okay. What is that? Uh, I don't know. I think they're leaving in a couple hours. Are you, you're not going though, right? No, that's I'm uh. Lucky you. I'm actually I'm getting a. a a break from from the the Starlighter trips. I will say it's a pretty grueling event, but yeah, uh, I'll 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 yeah. I'll end up be you know casting twelve hours of Asian Dota at night anyway. So. <laughs> so whether or not it's any less work is I guess debatable. That flight is so long. I'm really bad at flying. Like I I cannot sleep on planes. I try. I've been told to try sleepy medicine and stuff, but I don't really I'm not really keen on that and. I'll never sleep more th than like an hour in a row. So it's, you know, 17 hours of travel and you know, then I get there I'm like I need like 2 days to recover, but <laughs> every time we go to Starladder, we get there like 6 at most at best like 6 hours before we're supposed to go to bed. At worst like we get there and we already should have been a bit in bed for the, the next day. Have you tried one of those neck pillows? Yeah, yeah, the better? neck pillows are well, if you don't have one, you actually can't sleep because unless you're in the window seat because every time you fall asleep, your neck like goes to the left or the right, and then it, you just like jolt awake, so you have that sensation of like falling. You know, I don't know yeah. at least that happens to me. I I usually just use the tray in front of me. And How just sleep you, school. You school have to like style. contort your butt. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, your back really hurts when you do that, though. So. Maybe it, maybe it's just because I'm a bit taller than you, but like I can't even get my head on that tray. Also, people lean their chairs back half the time, anyway. Yeah, Kevin can't do it either. I I sat next to him in a flight, and he just kind of slept on my shoulder. It was really cute. I feel like I used to do that when I was a kid, but I, don't <laughs> know. I was like, I thought my head could fit on this, but it doesn't seem to be working. It's it's not even that comfortable, honestly. It no, just, it's it, not. Hurt, it hurts your neck a lot. It's a it's pretty good on like Amtrak or something where they have uh you have more space between the the seat in front of you and and where you are. But man, we're really we're getting into the nitty gritty of travel here, buddy. <laughs> we're really scraping the barrel for conversation. <laughs> Topics that we are lead somewhat, interesting lives. Yeah, just tangentially related to Dota. I I feel like this game is pretty. Isn't that some like weird unspoken rule that you're not supposed to say when a game is over? 
as a caster, you're continue you're supposed to continue to hype into the. Parry. I I think that's very overrated for online matches. I, yeah. especially for a group stage game. I, I fully agree that you should never say a game's over prematurely. But I also, everyone hates it when people when they feel like the caster is like trying to deceive them. You know, like if a game's yeah. over, it's over. There's, that's such a weird duality that you yeah. you can't deceive your audience. Well, the thing is, you actually can't win, right? Because there's some people who yeah. absolutely despise whenever someone says a game's over, even if it is. They just don't like being told it's over, because then they feel like there's no value in watching and their time's being wasted. Um, which, to that, I would say, if you really feel that way, then maybe you should just stop watching when a game's over. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's then there's the other side of the coin of people who, you know, instead of instead of that, they... They hate it when casters pretend the game's not over when it actually is. So. Okay, LD, I'll save us both the trouble then, so you don't have to say anything. I believe this game's over, and I'll tell you why, too, so it's okay, right? The Clockwork has no farm. He only has a blade mill. The level 9 Skyrath isn't going to really provide much damage. Chains just doesn't have enough farm at 31 minutes to be able to do anything. His illusions just aren't tanky enough. And with Xiao Wait almost picking up a butterfly with a Manta style, a BKB, a mech, Burning having an Aegis, I don't really think this is a fight that CSW can take. I yeah, there's the illusions are also useless. Like Naga, Naga just won't do anything. Yeah, she just half of her illusions are gone instantly before the fight even starts. Like, what's to stop BG just from walking up high ground? Yeah. Oh, and the, here's the kicker: if anything goes wrong, Ice Ice is there for the swap, and it's a level two swap at this point too. Yeah, and and the Deuce has Aegis anyway, so. There's a so lot of margin for error. Yeah, let's see if this game lasts longer than this pause was. I, well, they may not end the game, but they'll they'll definitely be looking to take this first lane of Rex. That is for sure. The good news is though that CSW, even if they do lose this game, they can take away a lot, and they can be sort of happy with how the early game went. Like they did a lot of the little things right. It was just when 2D got caught in the jungle. Remember when he was invis and they saw that. I mean, I assume he didn't expect there to be two rune wards because who does that? But when you have that on top of the little minor skirmishes that kind of went badly, like at bottom, when I think two heroes went down for nothing for CSW, those little, those little large, uh, those little engagements start to add up. Well, we're just waiting for uh, BG to get back and be ready to to unpause this one. This is our last match of the day, guys. We'll have the rebroadcast coming up next. Uh, we'll be continuing with the, the coverage over the next two days. Two more days of the, the group stage. There is no playoffs. Or there are no playoffs, I should say. And the siege now begins in earnest. BG looking to make it a clean 2-0 sweep over CSW. They'll use the Shadow Fiend Manta here. Just putting it kind of as a bodyguard, blocking the potential hookshot. Shall it? And Burning working as a tandem. They'll bring this tower down. They work now on the melee racks. And CSW... No glyph. We're going to have to fight very soon. Tornado continuing to just tickle Extinct, and he's just going to die to a Blink Shockwave here in a moment if he doesn't back off. In fact, he almost does die as Shadow Fiend gets caught out. He'll be swapped out of the cogs. He already BKB'd. That was a little bit awkward. The Requiem doing absolutely nothing as a result, and, well, Musica throwing himself up in the air. Shao it and Burning trying to decide if they want to go on him. They don't actually finish him off. He's low, and Lanham ends him with the finger. He gets zapped. Quick, easy kill. Three heroes dead. Double buyback on the Skyroth Clockwork, and well, Burning, he's back for round number two. They do get a Mystic Flare off in the Mana Burns there as well. He still tanks through it all. And now Tootie, blink over the top. RTK pile driving him back, and everybody herded out to the well. Chains really unable to get much done. So it looks like they won't get multiple lanes of Rex. They do end up losing their Aegis, but they, they cleanly take this base. And now another 1,300... Or, uh, sorry, 3,200 gold uh, favoring BG. Okay. We'll, we'll try and get Mr. Blitz back. Hello? Hello? Hey, you there? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a little robotic. Mmm... Oh, we may have to finish this one out with a solo cast, uh, if we can't get it working. I hear you. Yeah, you're really Sorry. robotic. It's it's because we're using a proxy, so. Hi, friend. Hey. Hey. 
All right. I think I think this might be a solo cast the rest of the way, guys. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're we're having some connectivity issues here with Blitz, but the game will move on. Godot now just gonna back off and stack some ancients. They've already lost one lane of Rax. They're they're somewhat up against it. CSW. At this point, it feels like their best play is just gonna be somehow ratting like crazy with chains. Maybe finding some pickoffs, but as we saw in that last fight, it's just very difficult for CSW to actually engage and. This is before the Shadow Fiend reaches full 6-slotted status. Shao 8 now can look to replace this mech Aquila soon, get his Satanic, Daedalus, or, or maybe MKB, the, the item to wrap things up. And at the same time, burning. Mantle style coming very soon. He closes in on that now. They'll have to they'll have to wait until they get these lanes pushed out, though. You can see, at the very least, CSW are reestablishing their map control a bit. Burning, just clearing out a wave here that now the top lane pushing in past the river, mid lane at the river, so they are getting the creepy equilibrium going their way a bit. And well, with that, CSW feels like they have one good fight left in them. And I'm now going on to Chains. Uh oh. Chains gotta be careful. Needs to keep these illusions on the line as much as possible. As they will do quite a bit of damage to Lanham. Another one coming in and. They'll just quickly mana drain it to get rid of it. The lion proving to be quite a an effective tool to to deal with that Naga Siren in general. Along with the Aghanim's Pugna. That's the other thing that we were seeing a lot of at TI4. Uh, Titan, the, the main team to run it. Just This was before the mana drain buff. It, it was just so good at shutting down the illusions with that, that zero cooldown ultimate. BG. Gonna bring Shao to the top lane, and CSW are forced to kind of defend their their side of the map. They can't really get too aggressive. Only the Naga can leave. The rest of the team has to hang back and and just play as as a group of four. Maybe they look for this hook shot mid. It comes out on the creeps. RTK though has a BKB, so he's absolutely fine. In fact, he will skewer two D out of that, and then they just get the kill on the clockwork. A sacrificial lamb. It costs them nothing but a BKB charge. Not sure if we can get Blitz back here. Maybe we'll, we'll try once more, but it's not looking too promising. Uh, looks like this this game maybe not looking too promising for CSW either. No, it's unfortunately not gonna happen. They'll walk up, shall we? Up out of the high ground, working on the tier three tower. Creep wave quickly dealt with. Knock illusions are in the base, but there's no there's only oh there are creeps bottom, so it can do a little bit of chip damage. But the real initiation comes out now as Lanham gets the quick frag on Extinct. And BG, chase onwards. They also managed to bring on the Nyx Assassin with Shao 8 going in on that. So they get three kills. Big God are just going to run over CSW to end this game, it looks like. They've taken two, lane of Rax, two lanes of Rax. They'll look for a third. Swap from Ice Ice on the way out as 2D gets... Well, he tries to go in for a hook shot, but that ends poorly. Bex completely turned against him now. Stone Gaze on a Musica. He gets reeled back in towards Burning. And everybody goes to sleep. Just for a moment now. Hey, buddy. Uh, I think I think there's maybe some connectivity issues still, unfortunately. And they're going to look to take the throw. BG, kind of the same way they end game number one. Just putting CSW out of their misery. The, the rough luck continues. It's going to be another loss for them. They even played well to start this game, but it just seems, for whatever reason, they just can't quite get the wins. 1-15 in 15 now. And the Dota 2 Asia Championship. It's just a, a struggle it's been in general from start to finish. Chains get swapped back in. BG gonna look for some additional fountain farm. Well, Tootie, as soon as he drops those cogs, he just dies. Musica forced back to the well. GG any moment. Thrown about to explode. CSW looking like a team that has yet to find their footing. While Big God will keep themselves in the running for one of those top six playoff spots. Uh, top four go to the main event fifth and sixth they go to wild card guys thank you all for watching very much i'm going to keep this wrap up very brief but uh be sure to follow blitz on twitter twitter.com slash blitz underscore dota he's awesome uh you can follow me follow me as well if you'd like at ld dota and uh for any vods uh, go to youtube.com slash beyond the summit tv with that said it's a wrap for this channel's coverage of today's dota 2 asia championships qualifier action but uh you can also check out twitch.tv slash beyond the summit 2 and twitch.tv slash beyond the summit 3 where EGAD as well as nightclubs have been casting. I will be back tomorrow night uh, in 
about 12 hours to, to continue bringing you guys some tournaments uh, or, or more of this qualifier. Tons of games still to come over the next two days. And uh, with that said, it's going to be Blitz as well as LD signing off. We will see you tomorrow. Oh, by the way, be sure to wish Cuddle Guy, Merlini, Gods, uh, as well as Zayori, good luck. They're headed off to Star Ladder Season 11. The land finals coming later this week. Thank you all for watching. We'll be back later. This has been a Beyond the Summit presentation.